Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be taking eight or nine vintage Corgi paperbacks from the late 1950s, early 1960s. They're in a terrible state. They all need a bit of work rubbing out. Um, they need the, the tops dusting off, um, spines repaired, all manner of stuff. And that's what we're going to be having a look at today. I want to get these as good as possible before they join my main collection. So sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Okay then, so I picked this little lot up in a in a job lot online, and um, I was doing an iron, but there was a couple of books in here that I particularly wanted to get my hands on. So I knew they were gonna pose a bit of a problem, but now that they've arrived, I'm pleasantly surprised that they're not worse than I thought they were gonna be. Um, so we'll try and clean up each book as best we can go. I think only one of these is probably too far gone. Uh, the rest of them I think are just gonna be okay. And in a lot of cases, it is the uh, the spines or part of the spine, which has just sort of come away and rubbed away. Now these are all sort of vintage Corgi paperbacks and they're from the uh, mid to late 50s. I think one maybe early 60s. So this is 1961, this particular one. This one, once again, you can see it's got the uh, bit of the spine that's gonna need gluing back down. This one is, yeah, this one's in, look at this. So I would take that out, to be honest. Quite a bit of rubbing to do on that one, rub that one out. 1959, it's a Western. This was the one I really wanted to get. It was the Corgi first of either jury, and it's actually a pretty nice copy as well. However, um, I don't know if you can see, but the actual, it's in three blocks approximately. And one of them has come straight away. So the book is all there, but that block is gonna need re-gluing. And I don't particularly wanna take the whole cover off. So I am just gonna re-glue that bit so that it's uh, nice and supple again. So anyway, as you can see, they're all sort of in this sort of corgi line here, and some are better than others. So we're just gonna to have to see how we get on. But in a lot of cases, the only thing that really needs doing are these um, spines need re-gluing back down, which should, it should be a fairly straightforward job. Now, the other thing we'll do, we need to um, rub down the top of the, uh, the top edges, because this is where dust and dirt accumulates. Now these corgi books are quite a small size, so that one's even smaller. So what I'm gonna do, I've got my uh, toothbrush here. This is one I usually use. And I'm just going to uh, do this and get it down as tightly as I can. So anyone who's sort of watched my videos before has seen my technique where I take a toothbrush and I just run it along the uh, top and bottom edges. The bottom edges generally aren't too bad because the books are stood up that way round and then the dust sort of falls on them. And often this is a process that happens over many, many years, you know, um, decades in fact. So the books that we're looking at today are about 60 years old or thereabouts. And uh, the quirky books in general I feel don't seem to have survived the test of time like some of the other publishers, say like Penguin, for example. Maybe they just weren't as well made, possibly, but I still like them and I do sort of pick them up when I come across them, but coming across them in the wild is proven it's a bit of a rarity. Now this one was particularly dark, this particular book. I've taken a bit of it off there. I'm not really sure what would have caused that one to be quite as bad as it is. It may be it was near uh, an open coal fireplace, which can sometimes cause very heavy page edge browning. I've lightened it up a little bit. 
I can perform miracles with these, but I am going to try and get them as good as I possibly can. And that's all you can really do with a lot of these old paperbacks. If I give them a little bit of lease of life so that they get to uh, be read a couple more times, then I think that's that's job well done, really. But it's not always possible, so. But this is certainly step number one. And then we're gonna have a lot of gluing to do today. But these have come up okay. So it's always like one of the first things I do is to give them a bit of a, a bit of a polish. So let's have a look at one which isn't too bad to begin with. Well, it's bad enough, isn't it? So the third book of crime crafts. This is like, there's a few of these and they're like crime anthologies. So first of all, I'm checking to, we've done the top edges. So now I'm checking to see if there's any turned over corners. So I'll go along with the top edge here, first of all. Just uh, check in for any anything inside. There's a bit of pencil to rub out in a sec. Let's check this bottom edge here. So here's a turned over corner. And when I come across the turned over corners, sometimes they're so brittle, they just fall, a, fall off in your hand. Other times like there, we can just sort of get a, f a fingernail in and uh, turn it back. Although the fingernail's not working there in that particular case. The tiny ones here are often the worst. Yeah, see, that actually did flake off a little bit there because the book is quite brittle. But nothing major, just a couple of turned over pages. Right, next thing then, let's get my rubber. So I used uh, one of these soft Pentel rubbers. Really good, these are. Get them in the art shop, pick them up online. Um, they're only about 50, 60p but well, well worth it. Um, all the book cleaning that I do, my one of these lasted about two years. So I thought that was money well spent. <laughs> Gonna create quite a bit of debris today. Right, so internally, I think that's about as good as we're gonna be able to get it. It's got all the pages there. It's mainly gonna be down to the covers. So, the next thing then really is, look at this, it's just, I use a tiny little micro screwdriver and I sort of put my glue in that way. Now, a few people have said to me, oh, well, you should use book binders glue. Doesn't really need anything that dramatic in my eyes. I use uh, Pritt Stick. Now, um, you'll recognize this one because it's non-toxic. It is specifically designed um, for paper and paper products. So you see it in schools and I don't think anything would happen if kids ate it. So, <laughs> so that's why it's popular in schools and what I do. Um, so say for example, we've got this small piece there to put down first of all. I'm just gonna get my little micro screwdriver, pop a little bit of glue on there like that. And I'm just gonna tease it in because that is all it really sort of needs. It was a bit of a hole. It's come away from the spine quite badly, this bit. And as I said, unfortunately, corky books aren't the best made books, although they had some fantastic titles. You'll notice a lot of these, in fact, all of the ones we've got today are black spines. That denotes crime, whereas the green ones on the whole crime. The green ones were on the whole science fiction. That was a way to make them stand out. So that's that first little bit pressed down. That's come, that's all right. But this is much more serious. You see all the way along there. Then it's come away, it's got a split there, which we can't really do a lot about. I just want this to survive and look half decent on the shelf. Um, and know that it's been cleaned as best I can. So I'm gonna put a load of glue down there. Now, unfortunately, it's just gonna be a bit of a, 
a time-consuming little chore. But I, I got this particular lot of books. It was like, I think it wasn't a lot more than about a tenner for the whole lot, including postage. And I don't know how long they've been up online. I don't think too long, to be honest. Um, but it was on a buy now, and I thought, well, I don't think I've got any of these. And in fact, I haven't got any of these, although I've had either jewellery through my hands a couple of times. But it was before I really sort of collected old Corgi books. And I've been reading a bit of Mickey Spillane lately in um, reprints from Manhunt magazine, the American Digest, and they're really good. Um, never really got into him before, but he's actually pretty good. And I hear I, the jury, which is the one that we've got, is perhaps his best. So I'm very much looking forward to giving this one a, a read in what is in actual fact the Corgi first edition of it. So a particularly nice edition to read it in. So I'm quite chuffed about that. I was listening to... Um, Tom and Eric on the Paperback Warrior podcast, and they were raving about Mickey Spillane. So I'm super pleased to be giving him a try. There we are. So I think I filled that up about as good as I can. And then we're going to just gently I'm going to squeeze the bits together like this. So I'm pushing, pinching it, and then I'm popping this down. Now, sometimes when you get the first bit down, it then creates a second layer that needs gluing down, but doesn't look like the spine is in multiple pieces, which you do sometimes find with old paperbacks. That's okay, but there is a bit there. So the very, very bottom of the book is also going to need a bit of glue, but that, initial bit there it's now looking okay but you see in here that needs a little bit of glue in there and then another bit underneath so we'll do the bit that in fact i'm going to get my scalpel that was clean the decks as we go so I'm going to use my little scalpel here just to get enough space. There we are. Just want to get it into that very up, that bit underneath there. So now that, that should give me just enough room to get a bit of glue in on the end here. And although it's a bit of a delicate job, I'm just pushing the glue in there. I do think it's quite rewarding. And it gives the uh, gives the book another little lease of life. Admittedly, it's not gonna stand many more readings. But even if it just gives it one more read, I'll be happy. Okay. So I think that's about as much gluing as we can get away with on this particular book. And what we'll do at the very end, the very last step of the process, I'm going to give the books a polish and take off as many cover fingerprints and bits of grubbiness as well and that should really see them uh, come right up so that's book number one and that had a bit of work to do but nothing that was insurmountable next time well here is either jury this is certainly the one i uh i bought the lot for and this isn't bad it's just got that one block there it is which needs re-gluing you can see the spine is actually The glue's just come away and it must be a, a little thing specific to these corgis of the time. So I think the best bet, because this is all fine, I don't want to strip that any more than it is, is just load this up with glue and put some glue on this bit as well. Then 
push the spine back in and I'm going to need to leave it weighted under a few weights. So fairly straightforward fix this one. It doesn't require the entire cover to come off, which is good news. I have had to do that before on a Corgi and that was for Forbidden Planet, a highly collectible vintage Corgi paperback. Highly, highly collectible. Um, and one which I uh, I picked up quite cheap, but I had to do a real job on it. I mean, it was in three or four pieces and the cover was in two parts. I mean, I'd never seen anything like it, but it was worth doing because it was such a valuable book. I don't want to go stingy on this. I want to be quite generous with the amount of glue that I use because it really has completely come away. And it's like there's no glue there at all. It's just dried up. So that's what I'm doing now. Put plenty on. It's not going to hurt if I go a little bit over the edges. Put a load on here as well, literally straight onto the book. I want that to be as covered in glue as possible. To put that section back in. There we are. I'm just going to have one last look at this. Is there any way? I think I'm going to put some more glue down the bottom end here. This bottom, this bottom part can fit a little bit more in like so because that's where the other block is going to go I think just this bit here now needs the last last little blob now in my collection of paperbacks, I've got about, well, I don't know how many paperbacks I got. I think it's about 12 to 15,000, something like that, across all my various series that I've collected over the years. And by far, the Corgis are the ones which don't seem to turn up in the greatest of shape. And I just think it's because the titles were books that were read time and time again. Um, so they've been read a lot. Secondly, I just don't think they were made that well. Almost there. But I only want to do this the once. There we go. All right, I think that's well and truly glued. So now I need to just slip this block in place. Make sure it's as flush as I can make it. It won't be perfect, but it should be fairly close. And then I'm gonna push this spine in. So some of these are going to need some very targeted weights on them to get the uh, get them glued back in again but and in sort of the right sort of so that they're rigid and they're the right sort of shape because occasionally they just sort of bow out of shape slightly but that's looking all right i think that glue is going to set now over the next day or so and that one should be fine that's all set to be uh yeah that's all right it's all set to be uh just have the cover shined up on that one now here 1960 first published in the uk in 52 and there was a dragon a Dragon Books edition, 1959. I don't think I've ever seen that. It, this would have been the, the first like popular edition uh, by Corgi here. Right, now, this is the Western, A Shadow in the Wild. 
Whit Masterton. Yeah, this is the one which has got a really, but it's got a page that needs removing basically. The book is all there though. It's just the last sort of advertising pages out. I can rub that bit of writing out. It's quite, it's quite loose. And then the top needs it. So it's quite a loose copy this. So it's one of the worst ones we've got to do today. But it's just following the process rather than anything else. So we've already done that top edge. Do all the insides next. I think what I'm going to do on that last page, I'm just going to razor that bit out. I'd rather not have half a page hanging around. <laughs> so I don't think there's any more bent over corners, no. That's all the corners back. Right, yes. It's not looking great, is it, when you got a, a page hanging off there? Pretty rough book, this. Don't know if I'm going to be able to get slip working in the glue a little bit there. Get some of this out if I can. That's about as good as we're going to get it, but it's better than what was there, which was half a hanging page. <laughs> we'll do the covers at the end, give them a bit of a buffing up. But I've got this little bit of pencil inside to get rid of now, and that's fine. So it's a 15p, and then we've got a, a 9d. So nine pence. That would have been an even earlier one. And the nine pence isn't coming off so easily, so it may be that, that is actually in pen. And we're a bit stuck. I've made it faint. But this paper is so delicate that if I was to really um go to town rubbing this, I have a feeling it would take the page off, and I don't want that to happen. Now, another thing we got here is the inside jacket. So what I just use, I get a similar book of a similar size and then I can lean on it without bending the covers back too severely. So D. Carter was the owner of this one. And I'm taking out his original owner's name. Now, while I'm here, I see internally, look at that big, now is that fingerprint or is it just Dirt and grime. I think it's just dirt and grime. So sometimes it's a way you can just use your, your soft rubber to get rid of that sort of thing. But you can be, yeah, it didn't really get up, you can be on a slippery slope because when you start, you realise you then have to do the entire book. <laughs> and that could take loads of time. So that's that one done internally as best I can. Got rid of that back page. Oh, there's a sticker on the front. We're gonna, that's going to take up another bit more work. But the next thing I'm going to do is the um, the spine here, which is just this bit there. The two flaps need folding back in and glued. So it's fairly straightforward. It's obvious to me what needs doing. So I'm a nice blob of glue again. Stick that on there. Let's look at that bit there. And then we can flick that bit over like so. Push that one down. There we are. And we need to do the same on the other side. I 
And so I like to use a little micro screwdriver because they're, they're small and they are versatile. And you don't want to be putting that big thing of Pritt stick all over your book. You can do it with much more precision using this uh, screwdriver. And there's that one as well. So squeeze it in and push down as far as good as possible. So it's, it gets rid of any surplus glue and because it's any Pritt sticks, nothing to worry about. Bit of my hands there. <laughs> There we go. So at least we can actually see the series number now at the top. SC74, 74 or something. Shadow in the wild. Right, so that's another one, that's all done. Um, it has got this sticker mark there now. Since we're going to be doing the covers in a minute, one thing I can do in advance of us doing that is to just damp that sticker um, with my cloth and some Mr. Sheen here. So I'm just going to get my, my soft cloth and I'm just going to spray some Mr. Sheen into one corner rather than on the book itself. I'm just going to dab it on. So you can clearly see where that sticker is now. And that one can go over to that side because it's going to need to uh, let that soak in a bit. And hopefully by the time we get ready to do that, that sticker would have softened the glue up a bit. The spray would have softened the glue. Okay, the listening walls. Did she fall or was she pushed? I don't know. Now this one, tiny bit of gluing there to be done. Tiny bit at the top. What's it like inside? Not the greatest, but not, not awful. So it can certainly be saved, this one. Unlike one of the ones, which when I had a look at it, I thought, oh, I don't think we can save this one. And I don't think I'd want to, because it just wouldn't be a very enjoyable experience to read it. So we'll get to that in a minute. But, but if I'm only letting just the one book go, then I think we've done all right, you know. 1961. So it's got an old bookshop stamp in. New and a half price, 95 Church Street, Croydon. Hmm. Covers are quite grubby. So I'm hoping that those will come up once we get to the, uh, the polishing stage. A little swines. There we are. So internally, actually not too bad. There's not even any pencil marks in it. It is literally just uh, the spine and then we're gonna need to give it a, a polish. So once again, there we are. Look. So we're just gonna get some glue initially into there. Then when that's done, then we'll fold that that flap there back. So fairly obvious what we need to do on this first piece here, the bottom of the spine, and then we'll uh, have a stab at the top. So let's just lift that up. And I want to be, I want to be fairly generous in here, right across the bottom edge of the spine. Here we are. Right. So this is a case of 
where the, the spine is layered because the spine is actually two ply as it were. So the first bit's glued down, but now I need to slip another tiny bit of glue in on the second layer, which is still folded over. So we're just going to get that just in there like that. That should be enough. It's not going to need a lot. Then we'll flip that bit over, pinch it again so it's as tight as possible, and then it's got it. So look at what an improvement that is. All right, now we're going to do the same at the top. So it's not come away completely, but it needs a good glob of glue both sides of the top of the spine to push that bit back down. So let's do this bit first of all. And by doing this, it should be pretty much good enough for a few more years now. Certainly, hopefully enough to withstand another read or two. But it is interesting how the the spines of these corgis do seem so susceptible to rubbing. And that's the same on almost all the corgis that I've got, that are this sort of vintage, you know. Do the other side now. That bit seemed made to measure. There we are, that's good news. So I think that's got that spine looking as good as we're going to be able to get it. It has got some loss and we can't magic that out of thin air. Some people might be tempted to say, well, why don't you, because this is such a black spine, why don't you go along with a black marker and touch it all up? Um, I have seen people do that. Um, it's not really something that I would ever want to do. I mean, we're not looking to make this a collectible book that's going to be worth hundreds of pounds. Um, even mint ones of this are going to be like a tenner maybe if it was immaculate. Um, all we're doing is, is repairing it and giving it a new lease of life and getting it looking as good as possible for now. Right, this one was not too bad, um, as I recall. It just had the really uh, browned, darkened edges, darkened page edges. But quite a nice one, this. 1957, I think it could well be the oldest one we've got to look at today. Um, there, the spine has come away and there's actual loss, so that you can see it's got loss there. But that's not going to stop us re-gluing that bit down. Just stick some glue under there, just to make that as good as possible. But that one's actually, apart from the loss of the spine, actually really good nick, this one. It's not bad at all. So I'm just trying to squeeze a bit of glue in there. Just enough to uh, to keep it so it doesn't get any worse. And I would be very interested to know if you have used some of the techniques that you've seen in these videos for your own books. Um, if I, I've never been on any course or anything. I've never studied to be a book repairer or a book binder. It's just something that I've learned over years and years of book collecting. And for a while I was a book dealer. I uh, used to deal in secondhand uh, books and old comics and things like that. Um, So you'd want your stock to look as good as possible. And over that time, you know, you, you inevitably pick up a few little tips and tricks. It's just part of being a bookseller. And um, that's why I often am surprised when you go into a, a second-hand bookshop and potentially the uh, the state of the books are in real disarray. And you think, God, could you not have spent a little bit of time just working your stock up a bit, you know. Anyway, that's that one. That's as good as it's going to be. Nothing else we can do on that except uh, polish the covers in a minute. So we've got four to go. 
but one of them I'm just not even going to try because it's just too far gone. So this is um, the second book of Crime Craft. This is that, another one in the anthology of Crime Authors series. So I'll just run through these first of all again, just flicking through. They're all nice and supple. I have to say that the books have remained supple. Um, almost certainly this was from an original owner collection who bought them and kept hold of them all these years. Um, he may have not picked them all up brand new, but there was certainly a collection because um, they're similar sorts of titles. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing I can do on the inside on that one at all. And the spine, in actual fact, is it's pretty good. There's nothing for me to re-glue there. Once again, that one, because we've already done the edges, it just needs um, the polishing, the cover polishing on that one. So we can do that without too much trouble. Nowhere to run, Donald McKenzie. I think this could be a similar story, you know. So let's just flick through. I think it's just one, one little corner that needs uh, folded back over. That's not too serious. Okay, it's quite quite supple this one. Um, a tiny bit out of shape, like it's been read a few times. Spine though. Well, it's not perfect, but it's got. It's okay. It's okay, so that one's all right. That's just ready for a polish. Right, now this one we'll leave to the end because that's the one I think I'm just going to get shot of. This one, then, A Cry in the Night. Another Whip Masterton. Now, let's just give it the old flick through, first of all. Oh, what was that? Don't know, but we're going to get rid of it. It's nothing to do with the book. It says uh, 30 pence inside. This is the first, this is from 1958, this one. This one looks like it's only been read a couple of times, you know. So let's get that pencil price out, if that's indeed what it is. I think it, that's what it is. Okay, and then it's not bad. It's got a bit which we're going to be able to take off in a minute. Um, bits of like dirt and grime stickiness, but spine wise, there's obviously this bit down there. It's a little bit at the top there. I'm just going to glue this bit back down. I think it's not too bad. Let's grab a tiny bit of glue in there. Just a little bit on the end here. just to push that little corner in. Probably went a bit too generous on that, so I've got a bit of my fingers, but that doesn't matter. That's the joy of using something like Pritt Stick. It doesn't, you don't have to be super accurate. That's the top bit. And now the bottom bit's a bit more work. So we'll do this, uh, that worst split, first of all. And then there's a, there's a, a smaller bit as well, just to finish this particular book off. There we are. I think that's going to be enough to do that first um, fold. It's very, very sticky, as you can see, but I want to leave that bit in there. I don't want it to come out if possible. I just want to fold it over. So I'm pinching it in so it's nice and tight and then squeeze it down. Bit of excess glue come out, but once again, that's absolutely fine. And then I want to do that very last bottom edge. Now this is a bit fiddlier, a bit more fiddlier because there's not a lot to play with. So I only need a, a like a, a hair of glue in there virtually. Just enough to fold that one back if possible. So I'm squeezing it again. Is that going to be enough to... Looks like it. It's just 
just folded that one back in. There we are. There we are. Once again, there, that's okay. That's now ready for um, polishing, which is going to make a big difference on that book. So, sweep these out. Now, this last one here, as I said, it's so far gone. Sometimes you have to say enough is enough. Now, just look at this one. The cover's virtually off and it's all been taped. Um, same on this side, it's, it is literally falling to bits. It honestly has no redeeming features. And even if I was to somehow patch this up, which I could do, I could, you know, perhaps take the cover off completely and redo it. And the actual spine itself is, is not too bad. It's just so dirty and dog-eared. It, it's been obviously read to death. I just don't think anyone's ever going to want to read it again. So I'm just not going to bother. So that, along with some of the other rubbish, can be that is going to be going in the bin. It's not worth saving. Right. Let's have a look at this. So if you remember, this was the one which had that sticker on. So I'm hoping, now that it's had a bit of time to soak in, that this sticker is coming off just with my finger now here. Look at that. So that was on there. It was soaking in the uh, polish for about 10 minutes. And look, it's come straight off. There's a little bit of sticky residue there, but it's not bad. So the books are now at the final stage, really, where we've repaired the spines as best as possible. They're all clean inside and out. And we're just going to give the uh, covers a darn good polish. So that's what we'll do next. Okay, so to do the polishing then, I've got this really soft um, duster. And I tend to use Mr. Sheen if I've got it around. This is like a multi-surface furniture polish, but one that I've been using for years. And it seems to be the most effective compared to all the other ones that I've tried. Now... I don't think I want to be spraying directly onto any of these books here. So I stick it onto the soft cloth first of all and just sort of dab it in a bit. And then I'm going to give these a bit of a clean and hopefully it's going to see the covers. It'll, it'll take up an amazing amount of dirt, but a lot of it is just not visible to the human eye until you actually look at the state of the cloth afterwards. <laughs> and you think, blue and egg, I can't imagine there was that much on there. Suddenly, whites actually do look white. And you have to be careful, and obviously we've just glued these down, so the spines can be a little bit susceptible. But if we can even get a percentage of some of the, the surface dirt off these, it's gonna make a huge difference, you know? But considering they were really one step from the bin, um, we can't complain. So look, that's just off the the one book. All that sort of dirt there has come off. Not perfect, but that is about as good as it's going to get. This one should be all right. Eye in the night. Nice bold red cover there. Already looking better. I'm not sure how much of this you can actually see the book improving, but I can see numerous little marks and fingerprints and bits of dirt just coming off it with this row of, by doing this on the uh, over the covers, it does make a huge difference. And I can see loads coming off this one. This has got, this has had 60 years of fingerprints, dirt, grime, handling until today. This is the first time it's ever been cleaned for 60 years. And that's come out really nicely. I can't. 
well, that's made a huge difference on that one. I mean, that's a really nice book to hold now. I can see in the in the in the light just a couple other little spots. I'm gonna see if I can get those up and just to give it the absolute best possible cleaning that I can. Yeah, that's got those as well. That's a little beauty. That's come out really nicely there. I'm very pleased with that one. This is another one. Shouldn't be too bad. Should come out quite nicely. It's like the books almost eat, eat the polish somehow. Nice uh, dramatic cover this one. I can't see a cover artist name on this, so I couldn't tell you exactly who it is, but it's a nice one all the same. This one's got a much cleaner back cover than a couple of the other ones there, which is good because it's all white, but even this has got up loads of dirt, loads of it. few little bits there, there we are. Look how clean that's come up compared to how it was. What a difference. Once again, that's a real, a real beauty, that one. That's a real success story for the cleaning there. This one was pretty borderline to begin with, this Crime Craft book, so I'm not sure how well this one's going to come up, but we'll just do as best we can because, you know, as I said at the start, I'm not a miracle worker. <laughs> However, I try the best, try the best that I can. But the actual process of cleaning your books, just, you know, if you want to do your own, just do what I did, sort of. Do your top edges, get all the dust and dirt off first of all, then go through the book and turn back any unturned over pages, get rid of any rubbish inside, rub out any marks, prices, inscriptions, glue down any bits that need gluing. And you can get your books looking good as well. I'd certainly prefer if I had the time, I would go back and do all my paperbacks. But I don't have that much time to uh, go back and look through them all. Um, something like my Penguin books that I've collected for decades, um, I've just kept adding to the collection. I haven't really been through systematically and uh, decided which ones I needed to clean up, as it were. I try and clean them as I go, but when I've been filming my videos recently and I'm looking at my old books, I think, oh, blimey. I should have um, given these a bit of a once over before I started filming them, but that's just something to do in the future. But certainly, you know, this is this whole process of cleaning these eight or nine books has taken about an hour in total, but highly, highly rewarding. And I got some nice books to look at as well. Let's see, that's come up lovely, isn't it? So we're almost there. The f three books to go. So this one was particularly bad. I don't know if it could be, I don't know how much dirt and grime this is actually gonna pick up. You see just how dirty this is. You can see around the bottom there, it's like fingerprinty, it's almost like muddy. Um, so I put some, put some polish on and let's just give it a go. I think that's all you can sometimes do. Um, it's not gonna make it any worse, is it? But. If it can give it a little bit of a, a clean, then all well and good. It's certainly not great. I've ta it's, it's taken loads of muck off. So at least it will be clean in the hand, but it's just not going to be the best looker, shall we say. <laughs> well, it's made a little bit of a difference, but the muck that came off that was almost fresh wasn't it so let's do this one now third book of crime craft 
see how this one gets on. So this one wasn't anything like as bad as that last one there. So I think this will come up quite nicely, quite nicely. There we are. Yeah, it's not okay. Bit of a split spine, but it's a much thicker book than any of the rest of them, um, you know, page count wise. So I can't hold it against it. There we are, that's okay. Just see a little bit around there. Maybe there was a sticker. And the last one, of course, is the uh, the one that I bought this lot for, which is the copy of I, the Jury. Now you see it's uh, got a super black cover. So these are the sorts of covers that get marked very, very easily, but this should come up absolutely lovely with the work that we've already done on this and it had a very nice spine as well which has thankfully survived quite intact um, quite a bold back cover there look at that Mickey Spillane the author with 70 million sales and that's come out lovely as well yeah that's come up nice and clean can't complain at that, can we? <laughs> so there we are, that's them all cleaned up. And I think we deserve one last little look at these little beauties. So let me just pull the camera out a moment. And I think all things considered, when you uh, remember what these were like at the start, they were in a, a real sorry old state. They were just didn't even feel very nice to hold. And I think now that they've been cleaned, they actually feel a lot cleaner. And they don't just feel like tatty paperbacks fit for the bin, which is certainly where they were heading. So I hope you have enjoyed today's video. If you have, do please give it that thumbs up. Do please hit the subscribe button if you've not already. For similar videos like this, I have actually got a dedicated book restoration playlist now so do check that one out and i shall look forward to seeing you again very soon bye